Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 355. That's 355 of the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Amazing. How am I? You know, hanging on in there. Um, 20 minutes ago, I was sweating profusely, so I had to take a break. I've actually recorded this intro a couple of times. So now that I'm um, adequately dry, I'll proceed <laughs> with getting some, um, what do you call it? What they call them? House rules out of the way? House rules? House stipulations? Regulations? Whatever? Intro? It doesn't matter. Let's continue. If it's your first time watching via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. Um, let me know what you think of the topics. Let me know what you think of the show in general. Any improvements? Any of your feedback will be much appreciated. If you're listening via the podcast app, of course, leave me a five-star review and share the show with your friends. And if you want to support the show, you can support it via Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you can get access to the entire archive of my show, as well as the full audio version of this podcast you're listening to in full, Three days ahead of everybody else. Three days ahead of everybody else via Patreon. The link is down below. Patreon.com forward slash Agostino. That's patreon.com forward slash A G O S T I N H O for as little as one dollar. Sign up right now. God, here we are, man. Another episode, another day. We're you're chugging on uh, chugging along. Chugging along, I guess you're chugging along. It's one step at a time, trying to make our lives as enjoy while we can in these uncertain times yeah that's what we're doing that's all we're doing but yeah jam pack show for you today lots of to get through stuff about Bert Kreischer stuff about Brendan Shaw stuff about Brian Callen stuff about uh sneakers some stuff about fashion so stuff about technology some rave stuff some illegal rave stuff and everything else in between so get yourself a drink or whatever and let's go through these topics so, number one thing to actually get on top of is um, they've actually re relaxed some laws or they've eased some of the lockdown restrictions in in England from this Saturday onwards, which is a bit questionable considering that, you know, the numbers haven't really gone, the numbers haven't really uh, gone to a level where you'd think they wanted to ease the lockdown. But I guess based on some of the reports that came out, I'm going to say a couple of weeks ago about the entertainment industry or the live events industry essentially being on its knees and then there was that protest with all the um supporting members or what, what would you call those people the people that actually are fundamental to actually making show live events and gigs go on but whoever they called they all came that they will protest somewhere in manchester and they all had their little boxes where they have all their gear in and they was kind of pushing out along the road to basically symbolize you know the amount of people that are going to be put out of work and that the fact that they kind of represent the infrastructure and the foundation of those live events and without them we don't have those events going forward so it was a pretty um i think that protest might have i think that protest might have uh pulled their arm a bit and might have made them think you know what we need to get some events back on um and stuff so that makes some sort of sense but the restrictions are still they're still pretty restricted anyway in terms of what they're allowing um i think bowling alleys and stuff are allowed to be open i've actually got a list of it here now let me get it up on here this is from the bbc it says coronavirus lockdown to ease further in england from saturday the important bit is here it said last week the figures from the uh, home office statistics showed this may be leveling off okay cool so under the new regulations we're going to have available or open to us in england indoor theaters and music performance venues will be able to reopen with social distance audiences i'm not too sure how that's going to work maybe they're going to have those kind of pod or table things that they're doing now with bars which is pretty interesting um i'm not really a fan of them but i'd rather wait until the lockdown is actually up ease all the way through we can go back to you know rubbing up shoulder to shoulder with strangers and sharing funny stories with drunks in the toilet i much prefer that than having to you know profusely be cleaning my hands with antibacterial spray um you know just so i can sit a hundred feet away from my favorite artist it's not for me uh wedding receptions in the form of sit down meals up to 30 guests will be permitted that's awesome i'm guessing a lot of people get married in the summer so a lot of their plans have been scuppered so that'll be good for those guys uh piloting a small number of sporting events to test the safe return of spectators will resume commencing with the final of the world snooker championship in, Sef in sheffield crucible theater over the weekend i'm not sure about you guys but having seen some videos of what goes on at snooker tournaments 
I'm not sure that's probably the best place to trial, uh, you know, members of the public going to watch a snooker game. They're usually full of the absolute prime specimens of the UK population. People that, you know, essentially drink themselves to oblivion, uh, you know, covered in shitty tattoos, in really bad tans, but just having a hell of a time. I love seeing the footage of those guys because they look at like they're having the best time ever watching one of the most boring sports in the world, if you can even call it a sport. So that's a very interesting way to kind of get kickstarting with live events but hey i bet i guess those guys are more smarter than that or you know they're far more intelligent than i am uh casinos and bowling alleys and skating rinks soft play areas will be open um that i guess is good I, i'm not really a fan of skating i still think skating is gay especially rollerblading and stuff um there's a lot of people doing it nowadays i'm not sure what's happened with kids where now they permit i'm not sure that the kids nowadays are super dorky in it they like dancing in front of tiktok cameras and they like skating in circles and you know, doing these sort of weird kind of back shuffly things around shopping centers and stuff. I'm not for it, man. I, I think it's ridiculous. But hey, that's me. Casinos are a good thing, I guess. You know? Degenerate gamblers out there, you're happy about that. Bowling alleys, I'm sure for people that can't take dates home, they're going to be happy about that too. Be able to do a bit of a finger blast behind, you know, <laughs> a screen somewhere. I don't know. Uh, it's a close contact um, beauty services such as facials, eyebrow threading and eyelash treatments, makeup applications, the microwave will resume. This again is maybe a good, indication that life is getting back to normal and probably gives some hope to people especially the ladies out there who are, who are maybe hesitant to go on dates and stuff if you're single right because you couldn't actually get your full kind of uh, beauty treatments done you could only get your hair tr uh, trimmed or styled or whatever it may be so now you can actually get everything done you know you could you could go get your facials go do your toes and your fingers and all that sort of nice nicety so i'm sure the levels of people dating or going out on dates will go sky high from Saturday onwards. I said here, pilots will take place at the conference venues ahead of the expected resumption of business events for the 1st of October. Yeah, so you can see the, the places in the UK that really contribute to our overall GDP, isn't it, right? And you can imagine how much those corporations pay for, you know, to hire out a place like the Excel Center, for instance, or Alexander Palace or whatever it may be. They really need to reopen those places ASAP. So they just can't afford to have everything closed down. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really for it. I honestly do think, again, America probably was the best, was a kind of the best example of it, how they basically really fucked it up. But they had a really good opportunity in America because they have, you know, what, 52 different states or whatever it may be, right? They had a real chance to really try some interesting and forward-thinking um, ideas on how to combat COVID-19, right? Take some different approaches, maybe learn some things from that state, take something from over there, remove that thing, and then try your best to basically keep that economy alive and make sure, or keep your local community com economy alive and make sure no one's local businesses get scuppered in it. And we could have probably done the same thing too, right? We could have probably had a different sort of approach in the North to the South, but we just didn't you know we didn't react quick enough and then when we did react it was too late and when we did react there was a kid gloves on you know telling people to use their common sense all that malarkey is like what like if ever there was a time where people needed strong direction and instructions and orders this is the time but hey where we are where we are now if you want to go bowling if you want to go to cinema if you want to get your eyebrow threaded now is a possible time to do it uh do it now before things change actually that's what i would say so yeah enjoy yourself Next topic, uh, Burt Kreischer's driving comedy tour. So Burt Kreischer, another member of the illustrious LA comedy scene that seems to be getting, that seems to be going through a bit of a tough time lately, um, has basically gone out of his way to put together a drive-in comedy tour right? i think he was the first person in that crew to do it and from the looks of it it looks pretty well done i was quite skeptical in the beginning i was a bit like hey why is this guy who's a father of two you know young girls who are about to go into high school and you know he has like a lovely wife who has a pretty good podcast herself i think wife of the party is it wife of the party or something like that right she has a, as well got a good podcast she has some good appearances with christina pazinski on the your mom's house too so they have a really you know they have a really good um relationship it seems like from the outside looking in she kind of gets what he does and kind of gets involved and all that kind of good stuff i think why do you want to run away and go on tour during this time when you could be at home with your family but i was also understanding that you know artists of that level um you know performing on stage isn't just necessarily a thing it's not basically a money grab it's not an opportunity just to run away from your family and get some boy time alone time it is kind of second nature to them it's like breathing they have to be on stage they can't take any pre any prolonged breaks 
away from it because they feel as if a part of themselves is missing and i kind of agree i kind of uh, understand it especially now where as we're heading into like what month six month seven of being under lockdown i'm really starting i'm really really starting to miss being on stage or behind a dj booth playing crappy music for 10 people in a bar somewhere i'm really really missing that and i think that's kind of um i've become a little bit more understanding as to why people are going out of their way to put on events in during these uncertain times where it doesn't really seem like the morally right the the ethical thing to do at the moment right it seems a bit irresponsible but also get the desire to kind of give people an opportunity to go somewhere and just unwind forget about the worries of the world for a bit in a safe environment and also get a chance for you to do what you know how to do best because i'd imagine especially if there's a i i think with all things forget comedy i think in this life right it's very difficult to get to a point where you find out what you want to do with your life it's very difficult to figure out what your thing is you probably spend your most of your time enough for me anyway from personal experience i spent most of my time trying to work and then giving myself this fake or telling myself this fake story that i was working because i was saving money so i can do the thing that i wanted to do but i wasn't because i never did the thing i was going to do until like the last couple of or the last five years or so right before that i was just using work as a reason not to think about my life and using work as an option as a way to kind of you know put that thing to one side so i could just focus on this thing so i don't have to kind of give myself any sort of uh emotional or mental turmoil trying to figure out what my thing is so if you do get to a stage where you figure out what you want to do in your life whether you're in your you know whether you're a teenager whether you're a young adult whether you're a dad i think it, you you owe it to yourself you owe it to your family you owe it to your friends to do whatever you can to hold on to hold on to it as tightly as you can don't ever let it go so if that means you have to perform in a car park during covid do it if that means you having to go on a tour bus for for a month or so without your family and have to go play in front of you know people that are sitting in their cars or you can see our headlights then do it because you know those gifts or those opportunities don't come around often anyway so this is some uh, images I'm going to play for you um, hopefully from Bert Kreischer's Instagram story is kind of showing you what it's all about um, it looks pretty cool man again uh, it's not cheap but I think for the most part it's like $100 or something like that per ticket um, you have to stay in your car I think for the most part uh, your cars are then socially distanced but the good thing I think people can obviously bring their own drinks and stuff and it turns into a little bit of a outdoor barbecue sort of vibe so it's pretty decent let's see Bert Kreischer's story where he kind of details a bit of it here. fuck you and not more what is it Let's go back, go back, go back. Where is it? See. Surfing is just yeah. a... Comedy's back, everybody here. Louisville, Kentucky. Look at that. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? That looks fun. This is what I'm talking about. It goes all the way back there. Wow. That looks oh, fun. shit. We got that the back fun. row in it. That looks fun as hell, man. Emily and Dave it. here own the local McDonald's here in Kentucky where we are. And they brought over... What did you bring over? Brought over 42. <laughs> that's fucking awesome fuck you and not more importantly they put my name on the banner yeah. it says a million served and congratulations yeah. for a great <laughs> hey, night guys thank you this is how you do a meet and greet at drive-in movie theaters you just sit at that's cool but god almighty I, I wonder what he's i wonder what his comedy friends think of him he is so self-absorbed isn't it he's like <laughs> he's so amazing he's like uh I guess because he's really good at stand-up, but he, sh he should be somebody that a lot of his friends shouldn't like. But I guess he's mentioned it previously. I think another show is that. I remember he mentioned some story about him overhearing some peer some of his peers, you know, talking badly about his act. But the way he goes on on social, like, he, you know, Joe Rogan shouldn't like Burt Kreischer, should he? Really, in general, if you think about how he is as a character, isn't it? Like, all this social media posting, you know, laughing at his own jokes, like... <sighs> I don't know, man. There's something weird about that, but hey, I like the guy. Uh, every hey, have a great night. Thank you for coming out. Let everyone drive by. Oh, thank you, of course guys. He have did. a great night. Of course he did. Let everyone drive by and see him so you can see him by. Now, some people... That's like similar to the what Casey and I thought you would do, isn't it? Where he always included those little bits of his video where somebody's like, hey, Casey. You know what I mean? It's like narcissism to the never level, isn't it, really? I think this bus is cold. And some people think this bus is hot. I want to introduce you to someone... Who thinks it's cold? Let's continue. Is it gonna more, no more, no, so no more tour stuff. Let's oh, it. They're having obviously Eagles fun win. on the tour bus and doing their thing. But yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Like I wonder if that's gonna be something that a lot of other comedians will end up doing, or whether it's a thing that you know. Of course, I'm assuming you'd have to have the funds able to kind of put on that show. You'd have to kind of 
similar to renting out a venue you'd have to bring in the entire equipment especially if there's no pa which there isn't going to be which there won't be especially if you're doing outdoors you're gonna have to you know either hire a company that can do it for you and they sort of move the stage around to the different areas that you're going ahead of time or you just hire it out yourself have some techs on hand that sort of put it together uh but i think it's a really interesting approach to go about things um and I guess, again, like I said, it's a good opportunity for people to kind of unplug and get away from, you know, the struggles of everyday life, especially during COVID. And if you've got the money and you can afford it, like I said, it's about $100, I think, right? This is his website. Let's see how much I get. I think it's about $100. Let's go smoke. Uh, but the PA, bubbity, 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 bah. I'm sure it's about 100 bucks or something along those kind of lines. Eventbrite, come on, load, you absolute trudger. Yeah, so about 160 to 320. So I guess depending on the uh oh wow, it sold out as well. Fucking top boy, man. Well done, but absolutely killer. I guess for his comedy, it kind of this this is the perfect thing to do. Like, you know, if you if you if you had to think if you had to think about a perfect person to do a driving comedy tour around all this sort of uh I won't say rednecky, but you know, the places in America where people really live live free, right? Um, he would be the perfect comedian to do so, such a thing, isn't it? Top off, drinking a beer, uh, you know, vibing out with the fans, you know, do all that Instagram story sharing and stuff. Like people love that stuff. So yeah, let's see if more people do it. Um, again, it's not something I would want to attend. I don't think I, I'm 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 willing to wait until things go back to normal or to how they were kind of in the beginning whether it's the new normal and, you know, everything is, you know, the capacity slashed everywhere. I want to get to a place where I'm, you know, rubbing, you know, my elbows with strangers and hanging out with randoms, all that sort of stuff, like how it was when I used to go out uh, and party all night long. I can't be, you know, sitting in a bubble somewhere and trying to pretend like I'm having a time of my life when I'm really hating every minute of it, in my opinion. Moving on! next on the list so um update on the union jordans man i am this is legitimately outside of the travis scott trail um runners that came out a, re, a, a while back these are probably the only shoes that i desperately want during this whole uh sneaker drop season uh this year during covid has been very difficult i guess because everyone's at home and you know people are bored people are broke so people are trying to sell resell the shoes to make a bit of money and then the, those of us that are sneaker heads just want to buy the shoes we're all at home we all have funds that we've basically saved because we're not traveling to work and stuff so everyone's got disposable income so you know and the, the, the quantity of these shoes don't go up if any if anything they just stay the same or they go down and you know there's all these backdoor deals happen so it's very difficult to get shoes now it feels like and even the, the shoes that aren't the most popular right, aren't the most popular they still sell out in minutes so um i'm not too sure what my chances are i'm sure i'm gonna get another l like i did during sneakers day it's just gonna be a continuous you know cacophony of l's but god damn it i really 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 want these union jordan fours i really really want them in guava or in black please for the love of god let that happen um you need actually release some new pictures here that i'm going to show you on the instagram giving a bit of a detailed look on the shoes and they look bloody beautiful like gorgeous beyond belief so this is from union's uh, instagram page it says we're excited to announce our and coming collaboration with jordan brand with brand jordan sorry this is our sophomore album and we got a robust collection that we will be sharing with you within the next couple of weeks which includes four different shoes which i think is the other shoe the other jordan but I'm not, i don't really care about that one an entire apparel collection the collection will launch on august the 29th so with no further ado we start with the kicks the a jordan 4 guava this will be the union exclusive colorway like blood i I love the fact that Union are hearkening back to the good old days of streetwear store drops where sometimes you would get a collection or sometimes you'd get a capsule collection, right? Uh, collaboration with a brand and you'd get uh, the ability to buy specific items at the store where the collaboration, you know, at the store of the collaborator and then the rest of the stuff will go, you know, to all the other uh, retailers out there. But there were some kind of store exclusive things that you could pick up, whether it was tote bags, uh, hats, accessories, whatever it may be. But I like the fact that they get the ability to do two shoes and they sell one exclusively through Union. That is genius. I fucking love it. Um, the that would be uh, the Union exclusive colorway. It says please check the website Union um, Jordan LA .com for more pictures and additional launch information as it becomes available. In the coming weeks, we'll share images of the apparel as well as the campaign and tour and another little surprise. Stay tuned. I'm really interested to find out what exactly drove them to make this shoe this way. Um, color blocking, 
um the idea of essentially flipping all the little details like this little eye stay bit has basically been it looks like the shoe is inside out but then it's kind of it's been exploded and then put back together the wrong way around if you get what i mean like this mud i think this mud guard should be underneath that that should be underneath the lace the lace bit should be underneath this bit here uh this sort of plastic eyelet thing should be inside it shouldn't be outside it um i like it i fucking love it the fact that there's no they haven't popped out this little window on the wings here as well it's absolutely beautiful the color application the fact that the tongue has basically been clipped back i'm not sure if this is a nod to streetwear or sneaker culture from back in the day in la where people used to maybe snip the tongue off of their jordan 4 maybe similar to what people used to do with skate highs remember when people in skateboarding used to take a skate high and basically cut it into a mid um i think that might have been the reason why they actually made the half cab i'm not too sure or this or the skate or the skate or the skate high mid whatever it's called right i think that might be the reason so that you can, you can cut off the little you know bit to basically allow your ankle to move a little bit more freely but this guava shoe is bloody beautiful. I actually prefer it with the tongue down. Um, it sort of looks a little bit like those Chinese fakes of Jordans where you can always tell the, the because the tongue is always a bit, you know, jangly. But I actually like when it's sort of clipped down. I like the fact that it's been reversed and flipped around. If you've got a pair of Jordan 4s, literally one of my favorite, my top three favorite shoes in the world. Um, Jordans, yeah, Air Jordan, yeah, Jordan 4, Air Force 1 and Air Max 90, top three shoes. But... If you've got a pair of Jordan 4s, you know that the Air Jordan uh, tag is usually on the inside of your tongue. So they've basically flipped that around. Um, bloody beautiful. I actually like it kind of pulled back. Um, just gorgeous, man. You know, the stitching, of course, is great. Uh, reminds me of the stuff that they've done with the Air Jordan 1s from beforehand. Uh, just a great application on the shoe. Again, great colorway, very unique um, without being too crazy. And a real, uh, what would you call it? Uh, it's a real marmite kind of colorway and a shoe collaboration in general which probably gives me more of a chance to get them i don't i don't think that does because i still think people out there will just buy them because they're union collab and want to resell them but if ever there was an opportunity to do so it will be a pair of shoes that are you know guava with like this weird sort of uh yellowy stained midsole but they look fucking brilliant really really brilliant and then the black pair is even better like, you know you know me and black shoes i absolutely love them um so these are so i think the blacks are going to be available to all retailers so they'll be a lot easier to get than the guavas but to both pairs i'd easily wear you know on a daily basis because they're absolutely gorgeous uh, look at that like, look at that absolutely nice that jordan 4 in black like so so well done um and it kind of gives an indication on what maybe virgil will do with the wings as well and his jordan 4s are meant to be coming out soon from uh, the off-white ones so oh i really want these man so badly let's let's hope the the stars align for me is that what do you say is that new buck that is new buck right it's not sway that's that'll be nice um they'll they'll look a lot better beating up as well once people start you know stepping on your toes and you start shuffling at tech house dances <laughs> listen to michael bb tracks i think you these will look so much better once they've been broken in Ah, oh, I, I love these. I, I love both. Again, um, I'd probably want the guavas ahead of the blacks, but I want both. I don't care. Let's see if I can get them. Uh, probably unlikely, but you can only hope. You can only hope. Uh, the, 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 the. What, what day is it? Is it 29th. Coming up very, very soon. Okay, what else we want to talk about here? Let's move on. I've got loads of stuff to get through. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, yeah, Chrissy Teigen's pregnant, isn't it? And I could give a crap, but God damn it, man. Is there a more insufferable celebrity on the planet right now than Chrissy Teigen? She's probably more insufferable than someone like a Lena Denham. Lena Dunham, right? Former, oh yeah, the, the, the creator of Girls. Um, and again, she does nothing wrong. Similar to Lena Dunham, right? She's just, you know, a young woman trying to navigate through the world. It's difficult, you know, with all the influence and power and the money that they have. I mean, understandable. It's very difficult to actually make it work. But God damn it, Chrissy Teigen makes it hard to like her. Um, she's, you know, what, a football model who married, um, you know, a very popular pop star in Jod Legend and has somehow segued you know, her being a partner of a very famous singer into a career of, you know, cookware and food recipes and child rearing stuff and just, an, you know, annoying political clapbacks. But she's just so, so annoying. And you just know this pregnancy, like with all fucking pregnancies, right? We're seeing Katy Perry everywhere. She's getting interviewed by every fucking publication on the sun because, you know, someone decided to unload a clip in her. And it's like, God almighty, man, when did pregnancies become so 
important like people give birth big deal like why are you like what why did why did these become a, a content farm right and a, a, a content generator actually because you know they're going to have weeks and weeks and weeks of content that they're going to be pushing out leading up to the birth leading up to the gender reveal leading up to the name reveal the first call the first this it's just going to be boring continual stuff and again i understand you could say yeah if you're not a fan of us just don't tune in but that's not the point we're at a point now in social media that sometimes even if you don't want to know about these people's lives you get to know about them because it pops up on the right hand side of your bloody trending feed and suddenly now you've got information in your head you don't know you actually even wanted or you don't actually care for that's the annoying part of it they always find a way to bloody kind of bleed into your life and sort of tell you things and inform you about stuff and give you their opinion on topics that you have no care about right in my in my case i've got this little show that i'm doing here on youtube but if you didn't know about me you'd have no idea i exist no idea i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't um i wouldn't break through your third wall because i am not as bloody uh, virally relevant as somebody like a Chrissy Teigen, right? She steps on a bloody stone, it makes the news. She trips uh, on her kid's toy, that makes the news, right? Everything makes the news. It's just, oh, enough already, man. Enough. But you just know she's going to just bombard us with content for a bloody week about her being pregnant. All oh, this and that. Do that weird photo shoot that all the girls do where they're kind of a weird deity because they have a, a little person growing inside them like every other person did before they ever existed in the history of time. It's just, it's a weird thing, isn't it? It really is. Like, I would want no parts of it. You see that video of Harry Kane trying to do the gender reveal, kicking a ball uh, into the balloon or whatever it did in a goal and it bursting and revealing the, col the gender color, the, the color of the kid that'll be funny pop side it's mixed race but no um the gender of their child is like what are people doing oh it's so annoying man everyone wants to have a little reality tv show and everyone wants to be the star of their own movie and it's like god man if you were more interesting it would make it a lot more compelling to view but just being you know i don't know a person that says stuff on the internet and then wanting us to care about your pregnancy like come on oh jesus anyway maybe it's just me maybe it's just me. So, Charlotte the Wit went to go play in Italy, right? And she didn't really post. I didn't think she posted about it on her Instagram. I don't know. I haven't really checked her Instagram in a while, but I'm pretty sure it seems like a lot of people are DJing and playing out in these events, isn't it, right? That they're throwing, it, it's for the most part, in Switzerland, where I guess nightclubs and bars have reopened because, you know, a lot of big DJs have been playing there in actual nightclubs. And then you've got the open air events in France, Possession, Paris that little possession paris techno collective that i mentioned previously another show and then you've got this other crew of people doing shows it feels like in the south along the coast of italy right uh places like bergamo uh places like taranto in, uh, in bari right they're doing loads of stuff around they're not sure because those places are you know mostly populated by older folk maybe because they're not a lot of people that live there in general or maybe because they've got loads of open space i don't know but it seems like they're doing a lot of events over there and um i'm I don't really care. I don't know, man. I think we already, we, we know the risks involved with this virus. We know that, you know, for the most part, it does uh, spread a lot quicker within places where people are perspirating and dancing and shouting a lot, which happens to be raves and, you know, outdoor music events. So we know that's probably not a good idea to go and do these things. But we also know in the countries that they've been hard hit at, they really do need um, tourism. They need a, an ability to make money, generate some income, allow their local economy to survive or at least make it through until next year. So the only way to do that is to restart things, isn't it? To get clubs and bars and all these things open, large gathering places where people can come and spend a lot of money. So the governments in those countries, I don't blame them for giving the promoters a bit of encouragement, giving them a bit of a nudge and saying, hey, invite your favorite artists to come down. We'll maybe give them subsidize a little bit of the cost of this of the of the of the booking fee, maybe cover the flats, whatever it may be, or the or the ground travel. Is it ground travel? Is it the ground? Whatever that term is called, right? Um I don't blame them for doing so because hey, like we're living in, in real really unprecedented times but there needs to be uh there needs to be some sort of way to get us back to some kind of normality and allow people to get allow people to basically keep a roof over their heads that's the most important thing 
because it seems like most people haven't really dealt with the lockdown or really addressed it in the right way in the beginning mm -hmm. and everyone's sort of paying the price and sort of trying to you know scramble to get things back in order where they need to be but the Charlotte Witt event I'm not going to be again she's not my favourite DJ I would kind of you know she'd be the last person I'd go see or break my quarantine for but the event itself didn't look too bad and this is a uh, business techno talking about it on Twitter on Twitter sorry it's a really funny page to follow and there if you're um, interested about all the outrage that goes on on techno Twitter they basically cover all that stuff and again I, I don't really mind her playing there I think if the if the local if the local community or the local government said it's a good idea and you can go why not air looks fun as fuck to be honest as well it's in these weird little kind of um coliseum -y type things is that what it's called I'm not sure they look really cool but there's so many people man it's just ugh. that's the thing Italy has some of the best techno fans in the world right maybe the best techno fans in the world i really do think that for all the kind of stick italians get um on forums and stuff about being loud and you know boisterous and stuff they're really at the moment they're so basically single-handedly supporting their careers or the lifestyles or you know giving djs the ability to pay their mortgages put their kids through school during these unprecedented times without italian fans the entire scene it feels like would have maybe crumbled within itself right for the most part if you think about it like these guys are booking mad amount of people mostly with the big guys don't get me wrong they're not trying to break any new artists but they're booking people giving them an ability to make some money play in front of a really captive audience give the people that live there an opportunity to basically unplug unwind you know dance a bit have a bit of a smoke drink some champagne drink, uh, you know smoke copious amounts of cigarettes and do other stuff and just have a good time and i'm not really i can't really be against that to be honest because that looks fun even for a shot at the whatever that looks pretty cool So many like they love that and it's packing up packing right in around the dj staring at the black it's a really different crowd isn't it it's a very different crowd to like um move on for that it's a really different crowd to like a you know one that you'd see maybe in london or in berlin or even in paris if you look at some of those possession paris events right they really like they kind of look at djs as like an artist like they're gonna go see the killers or something right they're right up against the barricades staring at them trying to get their attention looking pointing to their flags writing signs and stuff it's interesting isn't it where to kind of approach it whereas in the uk or in berlin for the most part people are just like you know they got their backs to the dj and they're just like going ham obviously they're going to give them some love but for most of the thing they just they don't care about being seen they want to just dance and have a good time and let themselves go but i think for some djs who like that kind of um acknowledgement from the people that are listening to you or coming to see you dance i think it maybe is a good thing um but yeah italians are single-handedly keeping the scene alive it feels like they and and what well, and uh and swiss people they're booking all your favorite artists um getting them to play in amazing venues uh with a great captive crowd what's the place called this is here from someone's instagram it says uh chlorophylla chlorophylla kind of. there she is again but the only thing I don't like about these things, just to kind of pause it, is the prominence of bloody smartphones. Italians love a good recording. They love uploading a shitty piece of video to their online social media platforms, you know, when they could just be enjoying and having a good time. You know, it's even worse at the tech house events because there's literally no dancing. It's just people just standing there staring at people. It's just, it must be a bit disconcerting if you're a DJ because you never really get a feel. You only get a feel of how you're doing in front of an Italian crowd when the bass drops, it feels like, especially at tech house events. But the techno events and this one, it seems like people really did dance but i don't like the prevalence of the of the smartphones but you know it's part of their thing and it's what they do as a culture what can you do dc 10 is a good example of that as well it's always phones and camera lights that people are singing pretty <laughs> shallow <laughs> you have to smile like that man they fucking love techno down there, man. It's fucking awesome. Nice and cool. Mm. 
of these build ups. Fuck, we're going too long, man. Too many fucking build ups. That's the only thing I don't. The, you know, she's, again, prominent, you know, pretty decent DJ, I guess, for the most part, but it's just all so samey, isn't it? It's just like, it's not really a vibe. Banger after banger after banger. No real kind of progression in tempo or in feeling. Maybe a little bit better than the Mini Lens, but it's all a bit like, you know, flip a coin, you know. No real big difference in terms of how they DJ, but as an event, that looks fairly fun, fairly interesting. You know, they've got the stage up there. Uh, they've got like a big rectangle that basically pushes everybody back, I guess, two meters. Um, some great monitors on either side so you can actually hear what you're playing. And then they've got everyone sort of crowded around her, like sort of like in an auditorium. It looks amazing, to be honest, production wise. Again, like, Italians, I guess, like I said, the best fans out there. And then Nina Kravitz played there too. So. I'm not sure if they're purposely not posting it on their socials because they don't want to get some backlash from the techno Twitter crowd or they just forgot to. But a lot of people have been going out, man. It hasn't just been... Um, who did, who was getting the blame the other day? Emily Lenz in it for going to Possession Paris. And, oh, the Paris was a big one because we've just installed the lockdown here, quarantine lockdown for UK citizens that go to Paris or go to France for us, actually. If you do go uh, past Saturday, you're going to have to quarantine for 14 days when you come back to England. So the next Possession paris techno rave i think it's happening next saturday on the 22nd or something so it's gonna be interesting who decides to go and how that kind of how that sort of gets um how people react to it on social and stuff when they find out that you know there is you know a huge spike in numbers of cases in france and stuff so it's not you know and i think i saw a report saying that they've actually blamed young people i think the w the world health organization and again you can you know whatever you think about it and put it to one side but i think they said part of the reason why there's been spikes lately has been because of the prevalence of young people gathering you know in in groups and stuff and dancing and hanging out in public spaces or going to illegal raves or whatever it may be but anyway this is nina kravitz uh djing in a really ugly dress it's probably a really good designer dress but i don't really like it doesn't not really flattering for her but hey one of my favorites actually Look at the crowd. Look, they're just staring. They just stand there staring. They're very captive. They calm. They pay their money. They buy their drinks. But God damn it, man. They don't dance, do they? Look, they just stand and stare. Very interesting. But again, one of the best crowds. I love to play for an Italian crowd. I think it'll be fucking vibes. But it's like they're watching a band play, innit? They're just like mesmerized by that like, vampire weekend. Very interesting, man. Very, very, very interesting. Um, another one. This is a bit more. Tempo, it's Nina Kravis doing her Nina Kravis dance with her decks. And the crowd going a bit more crazy, maybe in night time, it feels like, maybe daytime, they're chilling out. That's cool, okay. A bit, a bit better there for that regard, but still. Uh, not the most captive audience. And then you've got another guy that went to go play, Ilario Alicante. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming Ilari Alicante is another one of these like we are, we are minimal recovering type people right I'm assuming I don't, I don't really know I'm not really kind of familiar with Ilari Alicante Alicante sorry Alicante um, so this is uh, everyone's in black isn't it black everywhere sunglasses skin fades uh, cool tattoos it's a very particular scene like you could you know no one that attends Greece Mula on the on a regular basis or prior to when it was open would ever see themselves going to something like this, isn't it? It's a very particular like but that's what I love about it. I love that techno has this ability or dance music in general. You have this ability to whatever you're into, you can kind of find an artist or a scene that kind of caters to it. Um that's why sometimes I think the debate around racial representation in dance music can get a little bit uh can be a little bit skewed and a little bit incorrect sometimes in its approach because if you're just looking at Charlotte the Wit, Nina Kravitz, and you're saying these guys are business techno and they're somehow indicative of the lack of diversity in the scene, I don't think it's accurate because they do cater to a certain audience, right? And I don't necessarily think this audience is going to be that captive or that receptive to like Honey Dijon. Maybe that's not a good example. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, I don't think Honey Dijon is going to be their favorite artist, right? They're into a particular kind of person, like a green velvet, for instance, right? Uh, I don't know who else I can make, I can mention, like a Ben Clock. Those, they, they occupy a different sort of space in dance music or in techno. They're not really, you know, you shouldn't be trying to compete with gigs with a Ben Clock or something because, you know, he's just going to destroy you because he has a little bit more of a, I guess, a generic or a general public, general public ugh, general public appeal i'm not too sure but i don't know i just thought about it so you know the, the the guys i've seen at Kit Kat or the people i've seen at like uh same heads they would never be at an event like this but hey. i don't 
know what's worse? This or EDM? Again, this looks like fun. I'd actually want to go, but... Oh, they're actually dancing for once. That's good. Because the other ones, people are dancing. There's a lot of lads in it. God damn it, man. If you want a boyfriend, go to Italy. And then here, of course, a selection of lads hanging out, having a good time. Loads of... Um, what do you call it? Loads of drinking of the... What's that? Dom Perignon? Ooh, there we go. Expensive taste, my friend. Another video looking down. That's pretty cool from the back of the DJ booth. That looks like fun. I'm speaking on the microphone. Okay, they're dancing a bit more now. Yeah, that's really fun. It's in the middle of a forest. That looks like a bloody fun venue, to be honest. Anyway. More videos at all. Everyone recording on their phones, of course. People trying to big friends behind a DJ booth. Oof, that's a good song. I don't know what that is, though. What is that? Let's play that one again. I don't know what that is, but that sounds hard. Okay. Hey, uh, so yeah, Nina Kravitz is bloody amazing. I'm not sure if you'd call this tech house, but wherever it is, it's fucking gorgeous. Look at people dancing, some dancing here. That's good to see. At last. Great production as it is anyway, man. It's not just some shitty thing where they put a couple of active monitors in a forest and just, you know, charge over overcharge people for, you know, essentially a forest rig. This looks like they went to some level of effort. The whole rig there, lighting and sound. Bloody hell, they went ham. And then we've got a couple more videos to end it, showcasing why Italians are the best techno fans in the world. Um, I think, again, I think they get a bad rap, but they do occupy a certain space in dance music and i think most djs are really excited when they go and play in italy i guess it's probably two for this either you go play somewhere where it's completely dead crowd they're just all they're smoking hookah staring at you yeah it's kind of giving you the, 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 the me mugging you like an episode of gomorrah or it's really captive audience where everyone's just losing their minds right if they've, they've, they've saved all month they saved all week uh to get on it and kind of see you play and they're really really eager to see you do your business behind the deck so it probably is uh those two extremes now look at these look at how loudly they're screaming hey, nina kravitz speaking italian okay? what you saying that's my last song Bloody hell. that's nice <laughs> she can speak italian she plays good music she takes pictures of her bathtub, semi-naked, triggers Maxioplex. What not can you what what can you not like about this woman, eh? Everyone likes that tune, it seems like that's a nice song. Yeah, the best fans are. Look how loud they are. So many of them packed in. They cheer bass lines, they sing along to bass lines sometimes. But oh, I miss DJing so much. Move on that one, a couple more, and then we'll move on to another topic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nina Kravitz is hard. That's what I'm saying. How can you hate me for not liking Start the Wet when you've got a Nina Kravitz that have occupies that space too? How can you if I have to choose a business techno female to follow, it's Nina Kravitz all day long, mate. Absolutely boss. Another one. I hate that dress though. <laughs> There you go. Teasing the audience. Uh, same track again. Bloody hell. I, th I guess it's something from her label, I'm assuming. Because she's banging out playing that one. Got a cigarette in hand here. Is it going to play? Nope. Probably not. Anyway, let's move on. But yeah, loads of events are happening. Um, give people the time to do their thing. I, I don't really begrudge them for trying to make something happen it is what it is and we're living in uncertain times i can definitely understand the need to unwind unplug and kind of do some other things especially during these times in it okay let's move on what else do we want to talk about here the 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 raves oh yeah this is funny so Brian Keller mentioned the other day on the Stephen Crowder show, Louder with Crowder. Um, no, Louder, Stephen Crowder actually asked him in the, in the interview. He was like, oh, um, also, uh, what's going on with you, Team you and Amy Schumer? Because Amy Schumer went ham, right? Amy Schumer basically put out a post 
where she basically tagged Brian Cannon and said bye, right? Like really, really bitchy shit. <laughs> Called him out for the accusation <laughs> and <laughs> and essentially gave us an indication that Brian Callan's Hollywood career is basically done. It's forgotten. It's erased. It's been finished. They press command in backspace. Regardless of what happens, the establishment has said, you are out of here. But it also made me think, and I think Steve McCann, was, that's why he basically asks, like, what basically happened between Brian Cannon and, and Amy Schumer that she'd go that hard at him, right? And kind of put his, you know, put his business out there into the wider public um, and not give a single fuck about it. And then, um, of course, when Steve McCann asked Brian Cannon, he kind of feigned ignorance. He had no idea why she didn't like him. And I was thinking, hold on, you know why she doesn't like you. But anyway, this is the post um, Amy Schumer put up um, from the, obviously, the, the original LA Times article. It says here, the LA Times just published this article by Amy Kaufman uh, about the repeat offences of Brian Callan. Thank you to the brave women coming forward and sharing their stories. You are saving women who have become after you and to the comics who are annoyed with me for standing with these ladies. What are you afraid of? Available on my number in my bio if anyone wants to talk about Brian or any other else and sexual abuse. Stu, Brian, have a nice day. So it, that seemed really catty, right? And super direct like super personal you know okay they've got something they've got a grudge going on there what happened did brian fucker back in the day um whatever we don't know but then i remembered i remember hold on they know exactly why she doesn't like them or why she doesn't like callan especially and it's because of this episode of the firing a kid from maybe last year do you remember when that story came out uh about amy schumer bumping some comedian in america bumping in america bumping some comedian uh during his headlining show and basically telling him mid set that she wanted to go on, right? Um, I think from what I've heard via the podcast, or from what I know now about comedy or about stand up comedy, it sometimes is a thing where if you are performing uh, on a prime time slot and Dave Chappelle happens to rock up to your show or rock up to your not your stand up. And by the club, way, can I just say whoa, something whoa, whoa, about Amy Schumer's stand up comedy? See, there we go. All due respect, uh, she's not. <laughs> see, I told you he's getting into it. So it's actually, yeah, it's a common thing in stand-up comedy world where if you're performing in a primetime slot and a big comedian rocks up, uh, they're allowed to bump you, quote unquote, which means that they take your your primetime slot and you, you go after them because they're basically saying, hey, I'm the bigger act. I want to run through some stuff and then dip out. So it's kind of like a you sort of like tipping your hat and basically recognizing the fact that this person is a bigger uh, is a bigger stand up than you or a bigger act or maybe has long more experience in the game or maybe it's a way for you to get a better favor in the future. Whatever it is, it's a thing that happens. But usually it's the thing that happens before you go on, right? So if you're playing nine to 10 and, and, and Chappelle wants to go on, and it's 8 45 you the, the manager will come to you and say hey Chappelle wants to go on is that all right you'll say yes and you go on but if you're on stage already they're not going to start giving you the light quickly so Chappelle can go on they're going to let you go for your set he's going to sit down and i think most big comedians do this though like watch what you're doing and then they'll maybe give you some notes or whatever it may be or sometimes if they go on before you they maybe watch you after whatever the case there is kind of an appreciation that hey i should acknowledge me i should finish my set then you can go on but i remember the story coming out about Schumer doing the opposite to some guy called Brendan Sagino or Sagino, which is ironic. Brendan, Brian, Brendan Schub. But she basically bumped him mid set and basically got his attention as she was basically speaking on stage. Said she went to go on and he basically cucked out and gave her the stage time. And then after the fact, she kind of went through some, you know, some weird bullying things via text and sent him some really weird messages. And he basically, you know, showed her her arsehole. And that story kind of, you know, ran its course because people realized, okay, as much as uh, Amy Schumer was a bitch in that situation, the guy, Brendan Sagino, didn't really stand up for himself either so you know it's hard to really get angry at amy schumer when the dude that's getting offended the, the dude that's basically involved in it isn't you know taking it that personally because he doesn't want to upset hollywood elite but when the story did break um they covered it on the fire and the kid first when they obviously covered it the first time they did the standard fire and the kid thing where they're trying to pretend like they're not hollywood and they basically backed up amy schumer and said oh this is what comedians do and they got a lot of stick from it i remember it was one of their most downvoted uh clips and they got a bit of stick on it online on social. Then, of course, when more news come out or they got more background story, more of a background uh, of what actually happened via, I think, Legion of Skanks, they kind of reversed and went back to kind of trashing Amy Schumer. But this is also, I think, during the same time when people were calling out Amy Schumer for joke stealing. I think this is about the same, might be the same time when Kurt Metzger went on Joe Rogan's show and were basically accusing Amy Schumer of joke stealing and Joe Rogan didn't want to get involved. There was a lot of noise about her joke stealing and people wanting to find out why Joe Rogan going out had the same way he went at Carlos Mencia, which isn't fair because I do think, looking back on it, Carlos Mencia, I think Joe Rogan probably does regret 
doing what he did to Conor McGregor a little bit. I think he kind of feels like he probably maybe went a bit too crazy. He essentially ended the guy's career um, for the most part. But anyway, when they kind of reverse tacked the fire and the kid one on their podcast and basically, you know, went a bit ham on Schumer, especially Callan. He was he was super spicy with some of these comments that he put out here. So let me get up here on the screen. I think it's from 340 something. Yeah, there you go, 347. Cool, yeah, so let's put it on here now and listen to a bit of this. And, and by the way, can I just say something about Amy Schumer's stand-up comedy? All due respect, she's not she's she's not great. I, I have many many she, friends who are, are funnier at stand-up than Amy. Amy's Amy's good, and Amy has earned her place. And Amy's her movie Trainwreck, she's doing great. But it's not like Amy Schumer is a great comic genius. I don't. I, I'm. I, <laughs> I think you got your reason why she hates you, Brian. <laughs> like if you were confused and you didn't know why she wanted, why she basically went to free under the bus and tag you <laughs> in an article that essentially is accusing you of raping women for stage time. Now you've got your answer. God Almighty, man! This is one of the rare moments where Brian Callen sort of does away with his Hollywood allegiances and kind of goes ham. I love this. This is what podcasts should be about, though, right? There should be a platform for you to kind of speak your truth because you're not beholden to the you know corporate um hollywood entertainment infrastructure right but as i guess the show bit, uh, evolved and got bigger you know they've all both got different responsibilities they've got growing families th different people that they're employing that are dependent on their paycheck they then decide to kind of you know get in line and essentially you know kind of censor what they said but this is a fairly honest take and something that a lot of people would probably echo especially behind the scenes I get a kick out of this. There's a comic who's been doing this so long. I just get a kick out of popularity doesn't mean that you're really funny. I know a lot Which of women. Which is funny. Say next to Brendan Shaw, been it a little bit, right? Popularity doesn't mean that. Hey. And that I'll put up against Amy Schumer. I'll put their hour up against Amy Schumer in a heartbeat. I can give you a number of them. So it's not uh, like. Just off the top. Eliza it's not like Schlesinger. I, yeah. Whitney Cummings. There are a lot of women that will hold their own and, and way better. So, which I don't like to get into this comparison stuff. But, no, but you're doing it, aren't you, mate? It's flavor. Everybody's like, different. But let, let's not get. Let's not also get it twisted. Ain't <laughs> nobody that I know. None of, none of, Why are you surprised that Amy Schumer doesn't like him? Come on, man. None of your dear friends are hearing a fucking peep out of Amy Schumer. We're not. <laughs> it's not like oh, Amy's getting up. We don't. I don't. I'm not watching her when she gets up. Oh, 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 oh. maybe because I'm just older. I've been around a lot longer than she has. But and I think Amy knows that. I think Amy's also Jesus probably. Christ. I don't think she would do that. She should be a little aware of her place as a comic. As but a this is this comic. is the problem, B. Don't you think is. He went, he went in hard on her and it scorched earth. I forgot how spicy that was. But yeah, he should, you know, you should know. I'm not really, you should know why people don't like you. You should have a good idea about what could maybe rub people the wrong way about your personality. And especially what some people particularly might be offended or might, you know, have a f reason why not to like you. Especially if he says something like that. That was spicy. That was spicy as hell. But yeah, you know, I guess they'll end up kissing and making up when the allegations are proved to be false. Probably not, but that was funny regardless anyway. Do, 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 do. Next on the list here, what do we have? Oh, this is funny, yeah. Um let's go through this actually. Um should we react to this? Yeah, let's go through this. Let's react to so I'm guessing you guys are aware that the fighter in the rinks has, you know, uh debuted on Patreon. That is the alternative podcast that Brendan Shaw and Brian Callan are doing now in the midst of the allegations of sexual misconduct and rape uh, that are, you know basically clouding or uh, stopping brian callan from appearing on tfat k so they've got a new show called fight in the rinks which is you know a little bit corny a little bit played out probably embarrassing if you're brian callan to be referred to as rinks when you're 50 plus years old but these are stand-up comedians who have essentially chosen a career that allows them to suspend um you know to give them a sense of, of peter pan right they are essentially adult teenagers in a weird way so they get to do these mad things like you know talk openly about hooking up with random women when they've got a wife and kids at home you know mentioning what they get up to in the bedroom with their wives because it you know it pays the bills they've got a really weird way to they go about things but then in these instances they do kind of you know even though they like to take the piss out of hollywood elites for you know uh po towing the party line a lot of the stuff that's happened to them in general has been their own doing because guess what they tried to kiss up to the hollywood elites but hey what can you do they've got a new show on patreon it's, pr it's doing pretty well they've got a lot of backers on there actually i checked recently maybe plus 1000 so they have obviously have fans and i think people are also intrigued about you know learning what actually happened how brian callan's intends to brian callan brian callan intends to kind of defend himself but in general um 
I think people were surprised about the amount of people that they got back in the show on Patreon. Um, again, it's going to be interesting to see how they go with it because if it just ends up being a platform where Brian Cannon just rants about cancel culture, I think it's going to lose backers really quickly. People are going to lose interest because like I said, The Firing Kid on YouTube, the regular show was suffering already. It wasn't the most uh, fun uh, show to watch. Uh, it felt as if they had effectively run out of things to talk about between each other. The magic had kind of died. And maybe it was a consequence of Brendan kind of becoming a bigger comedian on paper than brian callen in a short period of time again maybe via the la comedy scene metrics right i think for people that actually like stand-up comedy you wouldn't say that but i guess if you are about selling tickets and selling merch brendan shaw is undeniable the numbers speak for themselves in it right so there was maybe a little bit of jealousy there i don't know what it was but it's interesting because i was I, i'm I, i'm still a fan of those guys i think you know hopefully they turn it around but the early shows on fox like, they were so good, man. So bloody good. I don't know what happened to them or what happened to uh, the show overall, whether it was the, you know, Evan the Beard leaving and their former producer leaving. I'm not sure if it was that. They were part of the magic of the show. I don't know, man. But it's just a shame that it's kind of gone down the dumps. But I guess there's loads of other things to go and listen to. But anyway, somebody from the Fire on the Kid uh, subreddit, Big Up You Homeless Cats, put together or uploaded the first 10 minutes of the show from patreon that they uploaded so i'm going to watch a bit of that react to some bits and bobs and then we can go from there hopefully this doesn't get taken down i don't get a copyright strike and if i do hey ho what can you do um it is what it is you live by the sword you die by the sword this is not my content i did not make it i'm just trying to provide some fun times uh fun commentary or trying to provide a fun alternative take on very serious allegations but it is interesting though just optic wise isn't it i guess you have to fight i guess you have to fight for your life isn't it? when cancer culture hits you in hollywood because in hollywood it affects not only your ability to make income in the present but also in the future right and it also damages your relationships and if you know anything about making it in any kind of uh niche industry most of the reasons why you succeed and you get to the top is because of the people you're able to kind of pally up with partner with uh connect with as friends network with as business partners that is what really kind of propels your success to the next level it isn't about talent it isn't usually about money either it's mostly about access can you get access to the people that actually make the decisions that are actually the you know the people that open doors are they going to introduce you to certain people and and then if your talent is also there to match it and your desire and your determination and your work ethic or your work ethnic if you're Brendan Schaub then you'll definitely ascend and get pretty high up and I guess that's probably one of the reasons I'll mention it later about the Luis J Gomez and the whole New York comedy scene having a bit of an axe ground with the LA comedy scene I think that's partly it in it it feels like the LA comedy scene guys are a lot more industrious when it comes to making something of themselves outside of quote unquote just regular stand up because you can't do as many spots in LA because it's obviously such a big California is such a big place it's hard to bounce from club to club to club um, and also you know the clubs are obviously spread out but they do a lot of work in trying to get their career where they need to be in Hollywood whether it is kind of appearing on other shows aligning themselves with different individuals um, that obviously you know and again living in LA you have more access to the people that actually make the money decisions so you know by and large you become a lot more financially well off than maybe your East Coast counterparts who are more focused on the art of stand-up right they're all about going to do as many spots as possible telling jokes most of their podcasts are extremely you know joke laden from front to back there are some serious moments here and there but you don't really get this sort of like faux intellectualism on like the legion of skanks right they know what they are right they're scumbags they're pieces of shit they're broken people who have found the career that has made them uh whole and allowed them to connect with a whole community of people and they know the best that they can do is tell dick jokes and keep it moving but this whole kind of talking about you know political type stuff isn't their bag so it's interesting to see how this will evolve going forward but yeah let's let's play a bit of the show here and of course this indication as well that the sponsors obviously didn't want brian to be on the fire and the kid or maybe brian took the decision as a good friend to be like hey this is our only nest egg you take it and run and then i'll kind of set the background because you know he's a good, he, i guess he has the funds or the ability to do so he can kind of fire it from the background but god damn it man living in la too renting everything you just have to get back on the wagon in it but it's admirable that he's trying to defend himself in this case but let's react to the first 10 minutes of the show this is a, again a link shared for me via the homeless cats on the fire and the kids cyber i'll link it down below if you want to watch it in full you can but i'm going to stop it here and there to kind of comment on what they speak about in of eden in the garden of eden oh, where back. god you uh, there you go here we are <laughs> what's up bro what's what, up what are you doing here well no nothing i just figured what are you doing i figured here, we'd dude? start a podcast called the fighter in the rings oh yeah because i'm a little older now 
I, I've aged you know a little more, bit. You know more of the kid. A, well, aged a little bit. By the way, massaging, massaging my uh, pulled pulled the old Achilles. From doing how what? did I do that? From getting out of my car to get coffee. Got out of my car. And that's why you're the rinks. Got out of my car, and that's when you know you're the rinks because I, I take care of myself. Yeah, now. You can't be calling yourself Frinks. Imagine he gave, it's already cringe anyway because he gave himself the kid, right? Remember? That was his whole thing. He's so shtick that he gave himself a nickname at, I don't know, 30 years old or something or 20 years old. It's always, they're a very interesting partnership. You got one person who, I don't know why Brendan does this, but he tends to kind of jump on any team. He's kind of like the the comedian version of Drake when it comes to sports team. He wears like seven different, you know, sports memorabilia from seven different franchises, which is very bizarre. And I know people sometimes in the UK have like home and away teams or like teams outside of different leagues. But for the most part, we stick to one team in whatever sport that it is. You don't go and start jumping on someone else's bandwagon, right? But he loves that. I don't know what it is. And he's really proud about having a jersey from this team, a hat from the other one. It's like, God damn it, man. And you've got someone giving themselves nicknames. So I guess they're a perfect match in that regard. But yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, my car now, went, um, something went, oh, say my, my, my Achilles went like that. And I went, Ta! I'm asking you again. Yeah. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, Brennan, here's the thing. Here's Sometimes. the thing, man. Because this, is, this isn't fire in the kid. This is fighter in the rinks. Yeah, it's we got in the do, rinks now. Well, we've got to do that. The, the main brand. Well, see, here's so we the thing. We have to do this. It's the um, only way you and I can talk right due now. Due to forces beyond our control. It's the only way we can talk. In this culture, due to forces beyond our control, we had to go behind a paywall. We had to do this. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of what. Which is funny and ironic because they're the same guys that give it such a big one because they've got their own podcast, they can do their own thing and we're not on network television. But they've got themselves, they work themselves in a position where I'm assuming they've got a deal with some production company that gives them a certain amount of money to handle all the logistics of uploading stuff and maybe getting guests and hosting the show. I don't know. But they signed a deal that kind of gave, probably gave them a lot of cash up front or a lot of cash monthly, I'm not counting anyone's pockets, not my business. But it's interesting. The people that give it the big one about, being, about censorship have essentially allowed themselves to be censor, cens censored. So when they're in a position where they both have to fight for their careers, they have to essentially, you know, go about making a whole entire show, put it behind a paywall because they can't do it on their own platform that they've spent the best part of 10 years building. What happens when chaos hits? Now. Your boy's been working. Your boy's You've been working, been working and holding down. Yeah, as a ship. <laughs> Look at my mustache. No, no, no it's, it's red. I said, until they free Brian, I'm going to grow this mustache. <laughs> Thank now. you. And you've been bailing water and you've been plugging holes. You, you know how, you know, like a button on a fat kid's shirt? Yeah. That's me. I'm hanging on, but a at any given on time, a kid I was thinking at about, any given time, I'm gonna bust. <laughs> You're gonna bust. I'm gonna bust. Well, from exhaustion. You know those movies where the old warships with the sails and the cannons are hidden, yeah. and the fucking psh, and water's coming in. They're like trying to the Caribbean. That's how. Yeah, that's how I feel. The F and K ship is 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 doing. And I I'm sure, I'm sure Amy Kaufman's already written an article about this because this is really weird, isn't it? Like, imagine being accused of what you've been accused of, and you're sitting down joking and you know, fucking around with your best friend. I don't know. If that was me, again, if I'm innocent, I'm spending every waking moment proving my innocence. I know he can't do what Justin Bieber did. You can't get receipts and pictures and clips of you hanging out with people because, you know, he's old as fuck and it happened in the 90s. You know, there's no footage of what happened of the event, I'm assuming. Um, he can't probably gather corroborating witnesses because they probably don't want to get involved. It's not that easy for him to defend himself in that regard, but... Could your time be best spent, better spent actually, than sitting down and chatting shit with your boy about what you're going through in a joking manner? You can do this on the phone. You don't need to be, you know, I don't know. It's just optic wise. Again, again, maybe he is that confident that he's going to be able to just nip this in the bud. But I don't know, man. I wouldn't. This wouldn't be my first port of call personally. I, and they're kind and of, I'm on an island going, <laughs> sorry, sorry, get, keep bailing. And they're, <laughs> hey, come over to, come over to Patreon. I know, dude. <laughs> Let's do fighter it's in the ring. It's safe rings. over here. It's safe. Over Jump here. off that ship. Come well, over here's the thing. here. It's safe nowhere. In, in the garden of Eden, in the garden of Eden, oh, where God goes. created goes. paradise, right? <laughs> Perfect. The animals don't bite you. No, no thorns. A snake still got into the garden. So at the end of the day, here's here's what I have here's what I've learned. Here's well, here's the thing. The Whenever snake. you when it, when when chaos hits, it's gonna hit. I hope it doesn't hit for a lot of you. I hope when it hits you guys, you're old and in your sleep. Well, I think, but when chaos, yeah, chaos hits, is all different. When chaos hits, and it hits 
in the form of cancer. It hits in the form of a stray bullet. Oh, yeah. It hits in the form of what happened to me. Clogged whatever artery. It is. You you got you got you LA got a Times article. Whatever it is, you got <laughs> two. You got you got two options. The jokes are funny because this is all funny now, or a bit of a stick because obviously they're trying to make this show pop. I'm guessing, and Brian's always been a butt of the jokes. But there has to be a part of you if you're Hulk Helen that is a little bit annoying, right? <laughs> a little bit. This is a, probably a bit of a serious time for you, right? You're going through a lot of stuff. You just what? He's only a few months post divorce. Um, career has essentially been, you know, destroyed over an allegation, a career that was hanging on by a thread anyway. He was, wasn't taking stand up that serious. If you read between the lines about what his friend said, he wasn't writing new material, recycling old jokes, doing the same act he was doing a few, you know, years back. And now he's being given no option but to go to Jeremy Piven route and commit himself to a lane or to something that he didn't really enjoy doing, but he was good at doing it, right? I think Jeremy Piven is a good example. I think he was, you think he might have started out doing stand up, then kind of pivoted away from it and became a theater boy. And then when cancel culture came after him, he had to kind of pretend now that he was, or he was always a big fan of stand up and that's what he went to the rest of his life. And I think Callan's going to have to do the same thing. But the jokes are interesting, especially if you think and you believe the rumors on the net that they're going to go after a lot more comedians. If they end up going after Brendan Schaub and they end up attacking him, I wonder how he's going to approach this. Because they were crying on here prior, right? Um, distancing himself from their friend Brian Callan and now, uh, from, sorry, from Chris D'Elia. Now look at them. And especially Brian. It, like, you know, come on. Well, well, one, one, you fold up. Suck your thumb. Yeah, or, 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 but seriously, or you go, this is an opportunity for me to show myself what I'm actually made of. Or you throw your friend Chris Lee under the bus. You don't call him before you react on your very popular podcast show. Sob profusely under your shades post plastic surgery. That is also what you can do. Like this is a real opportunity for me to show myself who I've wanted to be all this time. Well, what I tell you when mm. all this shit was flying, I said one thing about us, Brian, is we're fighters. Yeah, we're fighters, and you're gonna fight. You're yes. not gonna just go away. No, you're not. But but the the pressure. By people, That's good. so many people Which say lay admirable. low. Admirable. So many people say just just lay low and let let things. I don't silence is guilt. I don't believe in that. No, I'm not doing. I that. I never have. And, I, and and I told you, if silent isn't guilt as well. Brendan is dumb as rocks. Silent isn't guilt. If you're accused of something that Brian Callan's accused of, you have to take some time to kind of um, center yourself, calm down, breathe. And, you know, receive some counsel from some experts, maybe crisis managers, whatever they may be, and then decide the best course of action. But you don't react straight away off, you know, shoot. Like he says, I go off the hip, you know, I let it you know, blah, blah, blah. You end up saying some stupid stuff that Brian says and, you know, that, that Brian, the Brendan has says in the, in the past. You have to take some time to really kind of think about the allegations and give it some serious thought. Maybe there is some truth to it. Maybe this is an, an event that you don't recall or you don't remember that way, but somebody else felt really uh put off by the way you went about doing things you have to be uh, respectful about that and uh, you know you have to you can't just dismiss it and say i'm gonna defend myself and fight this thing yeah you can do that but in due course and with a bit of tact but again i think brian's approaching it pretty well i think he did approach it in the right way he did lend comment to the original la times article but i think him not listening to brendan was a good decision because if you listen to brendan like you're gonna get in way more trouble especially if there's more to come out because i don't think this is the only bit of information unless I don't know. I just feel as if like if somebody like one of these kind of social justice in journalists like this Amy Kaufman woman who has a bit of a bee in a bonnet with the LA comedy scene, if she's going this ham with these guys, it feels like she's got a lot more ammo in her gun where ready to, you know, unload whenever she wants or a lot more allegations to maybe back up these original stories because it's never just one or two. Usually they kind of trickle out. But I don't know. I'm not too sure. If, if we're going to do this, you got to be outspoken. If you're just going to lay low and let the tide pass, I, no. unfortunately, as, as much as I love you and owe all my success to you, I'm still paying you. But the thing is, is um, you got to fight. If you're just going to go quiet, we can't do this anymore. Well, but fighting is being who I am and, and, and continuing to do what I do to make the world a better place. And also just, I'm a comedian. Well, that's one innocent. What happened to, why, why'd, happen, have, why'd have to happen to Brian? Isn't it? He's, he's a pretty decent dude, isn't it? What happens to him? Come on. The person does though. Right. You scratch and you claw. Right. Like and in that's a fucking all, movie, that, that's, Texas Chainsaw, and they're dragging your nails are stuck in that, the wall. That, that's all you can do, and that's what I will do. And also, yeah, great analogy, but, but but the other thing is is that I, I go back to um, what Jordan Peterson said in his book, uh, "An Antidote to Chaos: Twelve Rules for Life." Don't eat carbs. No, listen. Um, it's 
if if um, when in chaos, the only way out is to tell the truth. If you're in chaos, just fucking tell the truth. What else are you gonna? That's do? That's the only beacon yeah, you what have. Because I'm do? telling you, man, when shit is 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 overwhelming, you got to key into that. You got to key into who the fuck you are, and you got to tell the truth and just move forward. And that's it. I guess. And that's it. And it's it's always going to be scary. The world is fucking. It's it's a. You walk around thinking the world is a safe, fun place, and then you get hit in the fucking mouth, mm -hmm. and you realize, oof. But imagine all this. This like again. This is what I mean by these guys. They're so. Ugh. Imagine having friends like this. Honestly, I really do think they'd be in a far stronger position if they would have just come out and backed Chris D'Elia, or at least made some kind of effort to give him the platform to speak about the allegations, or maybe publicly went out and just said, "Hey, this is not the guy that we recognize. We're gonna re we're gonna um, reserve the right to comment on this because it's a really serious issue. But we're there. We support the victims if the allegations are true. But we're also there for our friend. We've known him for ten plus years. He's given us millions of income through Google AdSense by appearing on our bloody podcast and having one of the you know mostly viewed shows or the highest viewed shows." On the Fire and the Kid, I'm pretty sure is one of the one of the shows that Crystal Lee does with um, Will Sasso. When ironically Brendan wasn't there, but they could have done that, right? And honestly, and then and then if those allegations, because I I'm really certain that once the Chris when the Crystal Lee story was kind of getting put together, I'm definitely sure Brian Callen got word from his people that it was coming and he was going to be next or some people were talking about him because if you went through Twitter and you were searching and you were kind of listening to all the bits and pieces of information that are coming out when Crystal Lee information leaked even Brendan was getting accused of things Brian Callum was getting accused of things other communities were getting accused of things Jeff Ross people were being mentioned and flown but obviously something wasn't sticking at the time everyone was just focusing on Chris because of that sh because of the allegations and because obviously he was on the show you and he actually played a sexual predator there anyway so people kind of dismissed it but I think there was he, he knew prior that Crystal Lee was going to get accused what he's going to get accused of and he was going to be next if he would have just stood up for his friend during that time they could have had been a little bit more of a unit a little bit more of um, a base that they could all kind of gather around so they could talk openly about this issue and kind of address it maybe speak about some of the ills that's going on in the comedy scene the the you know difficulty of working in that kind of nightlife environment with women um, which is something that needs to be spoken about as well uh, the, the weird lines that get blurred when you're working in close proximity with somebody over a normal period of time and you build up feelings and stuff they could have had a really um a really good they could have had a really good um way to address this directly while still remaining loyal to their friends but the fact that they got on here and cried and essentially pretending like they didn't know who Crystal Leo was and that he was some suddenly I, i've never seen this from him before and tried to feign ignorance and was sobbing because they felt as if their career was going to be in jeopardy as well and they've never really spoke about it again since or spoken about him or how he's feeling come on man and now you want to talk about oh yeah now i've learned it looks like ugh, get this is fucking reality anyway that's all i want to say about it that I, I that that's that's my that's my my lesson to a lot of the young people listening. If you get into a situation where the shit really hits the fan and you don't know what which way to turn, because you can get ready for any opponent. The problem is usually an opponent that hits you, the real opponent, comes in a form you didn't expect, and they got a technique you've never seen. And he deleted, imagine he deleted all the pictures of Chris Leone's, That's the thing, man. What this uh, the hypocrisy? And you don't the have hypocrisy. the tools to fight. So the only way you can fight it is the truth. <laughs> sit sit into who you are. And fucking keep your head up and move forward. And this is Bottom the only line. way you can listen to myself and Brian Callen podcast. Watch or view. Correct. Or listen to is on Patreon now. That's it. It's what we had to do. Had to do it. What we had to do. That's unfortunately now, we're, we're or gonna, fortunately. We're going to have to. Yeah, I guess it continues. Like that. I'm not going to watch the whole thing because it's too long, but you can watch it yourself. I'll put a link of the link, a link of the first 10 minutes on there, but definitely sign up to Patreon if you're a fan. I think it's Fire in the Rinks. So it's patreon.com forward slash Fire in the Rinks. Sign up there. You can watch the whole show in full. But yeah, I'm not really down for it, man. I think it's a little bit rich, you know. Once you get in a situation, now you suddenly want to, you know, call for due process. You want to start lecturing people on, you know, the responsibility to tell the truth. When your friend was going through stuff, you publicly disowned him. You deleted all these images off your social media feed and tried to make it seem as if like you were never that close to begin with when you knew that you know for the most part you knew his um his tendencies on the road no one's excusing it or saying that you were kind of encouraging it but come on let's just call a spade a spade again credit to the guy for standing up to himself i think if you're innocent you have to do that but i just think the the format the way they're doing it especially considering the the severity of the allegations i just think your best your time could be best served trying to uh, fight for your case in court 
um, or with articles with other journalists going on other platforms that probably think you're guilty and trying to fight your case and really address it as best as you can to get your name clear so you can restart your career instead of doing these podcasts behind the paywall to what maybe make a couple of bucks and keep your head above water it's not really worth it in my opinion I would think so that's again my opinion I don't know the hate ho hopefully it works out for the guy what else we want to talk about here second yeah see what else of time here um i think that might be it you know i think that might be a good place to kind of end the show and leave it there for now um it's been a fun experience hasn't it it's been fun it's been good we've had a good time to chat and all that stuff but i think i'm gonna head off now so when an hour in i'm sweating from all this heat you know it's getting on top of me i kind of be i'm gonna cry but yeah what can you do anyway so this has been the Excellent Singer Show, episode number 355. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you want to support the show, make sure you click the Patreon link down below, patreon.com for just Agostino. And of course, if you're watching the show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. And if you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five-star review and share the show with your friends. Until then, see you guys very, very soon. Take care, be safe and all that malarkey. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Enjoy your weekend.